Hey guys, alright, I've tried to record the intro to this video like four times. It's just, it's hard to work into the front of it, so I'm just going to explain very simply that this story for today <clears throat> is about what happens when a man who's not used to people saying no to him finally say no to him. It's Susan's birthday, it's a milestone, I want to do something nice for her, so I go, I go balls out. I don't usually do birthday gifts, I want to surprise her. So I start stalking her activity on our browser, looking for things that she's like kind of shopping for but not buying, right? So I'm looking for patterns, and I find that she's interested in this one particular dress. It's uh, an A-line evening gown, turquoise color, made by L.K. Bennett. For the men out there, L.K. Bennett is apparently a very high-end women's fashion brand. So. I discovered that L.K. Bennett actually has a store uh, in Chicago on the Magnificent Mile, and I decide to go down there and, and get the dress for her. You know, simple, right? So they have this little fancy boutique, and I slip down there a few days before her birthday. I go into the store, and I immediately see the dress, and they have it. They have it in her size and her favorite color. And, okay, disturbance in the complex. Uh, anyway, I... You know, I'm done. I'm done shopping. It's 30 seconds, right? So, this is where things take a weird turn. The store is sort of L-shaped. So, I, I just walked in, and you have to go this way, and then you have to turn and go deeper into the store to get to the register. So, I can hear voices in the store, but I haven't actually seen a sales associate. Um, so, I grab the dress, I reach into my pocket, and I literally pull out my credit card. I have it in my hand, and just to be certain, I check the price tag of the dress. I didn't know how much it cost. And this mofo is $800. Now, ooh, I mean, I'm a cheap guy. And, you know, I have a little bit of money, but $800 still stings. You know, I'm not like that level of rich or anything. So, I debate briefly uh, over the next 10 seconds or so whether this is really worth it because Susan doesn't know I'm here. I didn't promise it to her. I can just walk away get her a couple of flowers and some, I don't know, something else. Because $800 goes a long way in my world. So the other part of my brain convinces me, you know, okay, just suck it up and do it. She'll really like it. She doesn't know you're under this dress. It's going to be a monster gift, right? So I steal myself, and I am pushing out of my comfort zone, people. I mean, you, you understand that, right? So I walk left. And then I turn, and I can now see the register. And I see the sales associate there. And she is talking to this couple. It's like a Sopranos kind of guy with gold jewelry and like a shirt that's open at the collar. And he has an aging trophy wife, or guma or whatever, that is, uh, is trying on clothes. And as I look, the, the trophy wife slips into one of the dressing rooms and the saleswoman sees me, and it's this perfect moment for her to just take care of me. And once again, I keep repeating this, but it's, it's, I have the dress in one hand, and I literally have a credit card in the other. The saleswoman looks at me, and I'm dressed like I am today. I would pan down, but before I started this video, I noticed there was a hole in my shorts um, that may inadvertently reveal my genitalia on my YouTube channel. So there's no pan down, but I'm wearing a, a pair of sort of ragged khaki shorts and like a holy t-shirt. I don't look classy. So the saleswoman sees me, takes all of this in, and I see in her eyes, she decides, nope, she looks away from me and back to Tony Soprano and just leaves me standing there. And do you know, you know the scene in Pretty Woman where they won't, won't sell her the, the clothes because she's, you know, a skanky hooker? That's me! So I look down, and you know I've come a long way to be here um, mentally, and so I it broke me. I take the dress, I walk back this way, hang it back up, walk out of the store, walk down the, the stairs, get on Mag Mile, and I walk directly across the street to the Apple Store, and I buy her a Generation Two iPad instead. And the inspiration for this story was born as I walked out of my front door to record this video and saw Susan doing ballet on the porch using a Generation 2 iPad to display the instructor. So.
This is the closest thing I've ever had to uh, having my white privilege stripped away. I still don't know quite what it means, but it didn't feel good.